together. So today is not going to be um, a 45 minute discussion on one particular faith tradition. It's going to be a practical way of incorporating prayer and reflection into your daily life, regardless what your belief system is. So we are going to come from the angle that we are all created by something. And with that, we can have gratitude for being created and for the creator. And we, um, lots of people use different words. Some use God, some use Christ, some use universe, some use higher power. You can insert whatever it is that you, um, whatever it is that you use to connect to the higher power that you um, live your life according to. But we're gonna open with a little bit of prayer to kind of set a tone and then we'll jump on in. So let's begin. Creator God, we are just grateful that you have gathered us together today to come and to learn more about how we connect with you through prayer. So we invite the spirit to be present, to open our eyes and ears and hearts to new ideas and new ways to hear from you and to communicate with you. So bless our time. We give all of this to you for your glory. Amen. Amen. I am going to start sharing my screen and at any time if you want to, if you have a question, go ahead and um, pop it into the chat or raise your hand. There's not a ton of us. We can pause and we can hear each other. Uh, Danielle will be monitoring the chat and we will be sharing this presentation. Today I'm doing prayer and reflection. Tomorrow um, Danielle is doing stress management. So we're going to be um, helping each other out as partners in this. But you are also on this journey, so feel free to jump in whenever you would like to. All right, so here we go. We're going to share this. So <clears throat> the goal when we were invited to do this was to have you walk away with real deal, easy takeaways so that we don't add to your already um, difficult life, your already stressed out existence. We wanted you to have something that you could put in your back pocket and, and pull out when you needed it. Um, we recognize where each of you are coming from with a life that's overwhelming. And we often have this idea that prayer, um, as we were taught, maybe or maybe not, is something you have to pause, you have to do, you have to fold your hands, you have to look down and be sacred and respectful. Prayer is, is a bigger thing than that. Prayer is... Um, I think often we put it in a little container and we assume it's one thing. And today I hope when you leave, you're gonna see prayer as being something a whole lot more than that. So we're going to, oop, yeah. sorry, we're gonna, oh, hey. all right. We're gonna start with this poem that gives us a different idea of what prayer is. Praying, it doesn't have to be the blue iris. It could be weeds in a vacant lot or a few small stones. Just pay attention. Then patch a few words together and don't try to make them elaborate. This isn't a contest, but the doorway into thanks and a silence in which another voice may speak. And I love this because sometimes we think that we have to have all the fancy words to pray. But Annie Lamont has, uh, she's one of my favorite authors and she says, I only have two prayers that I say and I say them every day. One is help me, the other is thank you. And truly those are two of the finest prayers I ever heard, right? Because it kind of encompasses everything. So <clears throat> when we think of prayer as not a performance, as not a big wordy thing where you can do it wrong and we just let it be, it takes the pressure off of doing it right or wrong, right? So if you're having a conversation with your best friend, I, I highly doubt you script it out first, that you really think it through and you make a little outline of what you're gonna say. You just talk, that's what you do. And that's what prayer is. Prayer is just letting your feelings come out. And sometimes it's through talking and sometimes it's not through talking. So <clears throat> I'm gonna share with you a Bible verse that is from the Christian tradition. And I'm gonna share this one not to impose the Christian tradition, but because this is where I think a lot of people go wrong with um, misunderstanding prayer. It says, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances for this is the will of God and Christ Jesus for you. I used to read this and think, pray without ceasing? Like, is that even a possibility? How in the world do you like nonstop pray? And I always found this to be a joke of a passage until we really started to explore our, our own um, spiritual life. And I realized what praying without ceasing means 
is simply breathing. So if you all take a moment now and you just take an inhale and then release it, you literally just sucked in the divine. You just prayed. And every time we take that breath in and we take that breath out, you're connecting with God. You're connecting with the creator. And in the Bible, in the Hebrew, it's the word is ruash. And then the Greek is called pneuma. Both of those words, whether it's Old Testament, New Testament, if you follow the Christian tradition, both of them mean breath, mean wind, mean spirit. So anytime you take a breath, you're sucking in the spirit. So then it becomes possible to pray without ceasing because I don't know about you, but I tend to breathe all day long. So if you're breathing continuously, you're praying continuously. And when we become conscious of our breath <clears throat> is when we take that pause and realize that's how close God is to us. When we say we're never alone, when we say there's always, you know, the divine is within us, it's true because you can't go on without breathing. You can't go on without the divine. So this is a new way of us um, envisioning prayer as something um, that is always there. We do it without even realizing it. So you are ready professional prayers. So that makes this an easy session because you are already one step ahead of the next guy because you're professionals. So when we think of prayer, one of the things I want you to uh, imagine it as more than just the laundry list for Santa right? A lot of times we, we think of prayer as telling God everything that we need. I want this. I need that. Why this? Where are you, God? And we do a whole lot of yelling and a whole lot of demanding. But if we shift that just a second and we think of prayer as our time to connect with God, as our time to live in compassion, as a time to live in gratitude, we can still yell at God and we can still do all that because God's shoulders are very big and he, God can handle all that. But if we, if we reframe it just a touch and we think of it as being life-giving, much like breath is life-giving, and we think of prayer as being something that allows us to improve our well-being, there are scientific studies that prove there will be better healing, there will be better um, recovery. People who have a, a spiritual life as their foundation do better in, in all areas. There's a man called Ken Pargament. He's a doctor who studies spirituality and healthcare. And his work is absolutely fascinating. And with our limited amount of time, I didn't want to get too into the weeds of all of the, um, the data. But he, he makes it very clear that we have to include the spiritual when we're dealing with people who are in crises, in particular in healthcare. Because when the mind, body, and spirit align, there are better results. And so I learned from him when I was a chaplain. I was a chaplain at St. Joe's and I was a chaplain um, in Chelsea and at, in the Ann Arbor location. And we would get trained by this gentleman. And when I started to observe the people who I would pray with before they went into surgery, their recoveries looked different. If somebody was um, out of sorts going into surgery, Things never went as smoothly. And so I really, I don't have enough anecdotal, I have anecdotal evidence. I don't have as much um, hardcore scientific proof on my own, but there are experts out there that do, that can show you how important prayer actually is. Not just because we're saying it, because it's scientifically based. Actually, two thirds of all doctors, no matter what their religious background or belief system is, believe and have seen and have witnessed miracles and will say that they have. Mm -hmm. So we know that um, there's, this plays a much bigger role when it comes to healthcare. Without a doubt. That's the fun part about what Danielle and I do. We have, besides all the work that we do in researching, people who share these stories with us. So we get to hear about these often, which is yeah, fantastic. Radical remissions. <laughs> radical remissions is a great one. So this is a, um, a researcher, Kristen Neff, and I found this particular uh, quote to be one that I thought maybe you could relate to. If we can compassionately remind ourselves in the moments of falling down that failure is part of the shared human experience, then that moment becomes one of togetherness rather than isolation. 
And when our troubled, painful experiences are framed by the recognition that countless others have undergone similar hardship, the blow is softened. And I feel as when we're, in, um, when we're praying together and when we're recognizing that we are not alone on this journey, that we share in the pain of many other people. And when we can come together and, and share our energies around um, prayer, I think it's at that point where all of a sudden there seems to be like a, an underlying support system. Because Danielle and I do this prayer, uh, live prayer event every Friday. And we pray around people's prayer requests. And we have people from all over the world that join us. We have tons of countries that participate. And knowing that all these people from around the world are coming together to pray over the same common denominator, the same issues, the same desires, the same needs, there's something really powerful and knowing you're not alone. So I hope that um, as we learn a couple of different styles of prayer right now, you recognize that you do not have to do these in isolation. You can do these with others. So we're gonna talk a bit about each one of these. These are um, seven different modalities of prayer that I use. There's tons of others. You can be as creative as you want but we're gonna go through each one of these and talk a little bit about them. I'm encouraging you to try to do one or more of these in the next week, just to see what happens, just to see the kind of peace that may come into your heart or into your mind. So the first one is just silence. The, the amount of noise that our world presents and the amount of noise that comes with um, dealing with having a sick child, dealing with being a caregiver, sometimes the best thing you can do is just turn off everything and sit in the silence. In that silence is where sometimes we allow other, other um, thoughts to come into our mind that maybe we've, we've not heard because we've been too caught up in the busy. Of all of these prayer modalities, silence is my hardest one. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to find one of these, you're going to go, no, nope, that one's not going to work for me. And that's totally okay, which is why we're giving you um, several options. For me, sometimes silence isn't pure silence because that silence gets too loud. Sometimes the silence for me is not having all the people around me, but maybe sitting with a song. And that creates a different sense of peace. It's not just quiet. It's just a different sound. So silence can come in different forms. Uh, Danielle is leading at our church next, or in a couple of weeks, she's leading a, a meditation on Matthew West's songs. Matthew West is a Christian artist and, and how to connect using modern day music. You need to find out what works for you. Can you find yourself just 30 seconds, even if it's in the bathroom? We all know sometimes that's the best place for silence, right? However it is for you to just disconnect from the, the chaos of your world and allow yourself to just be in the presence of God. That's a prayer. Now, object prayers are fun. I brought a few to show you. Um, Danielle, show your arms. <laughs> Danielle's a bead person and has gotten me into beads. Each one of these bracelets means something to her. Wanna tell us about one of them? Um, sure, so let's see. This one here, um, I don't know if you can see, it's got the little dragonfly. Um, I picked out this one. It's got some different um, other special seeds and such to it because I love being in nature. And I was praying once and asked for a sign. And this dragonfly flew by and landed on my journal and stayed on my journal like the whole time. And then he just moved to my foot. He'd sit on my big toe or my bunion because it's really big. It's a good landing <laughs> pad. <laughs> um, or, you know, and he just, he stayed literally like an hour and then flew out with me. I was in a prayer labyrinth at the time and he flew out with me. And so I saw this bracelet and it made me think of it. And so now sometimes if I'm just praying, sometimes for me, it's even just kind of rubbing these and just kind of counting the beads. If you do nothing else, but just count one, two, and then you're focusing on just the simplicity of that, that's really helpful. Mm -hmm. And so they're, they're meaningful to her. Um, when I was in the Holy Land, we picked up some rocks from um, one of my favorite Bible stories, Location. And 
these rocks, I, they're all different sizes. When I touch rocks, I just have a bunch of different rocks in front of me right now. When I pray and I rub the rocks, or if I just, I don't even have to be saying anything. If I'm just um, doing the motion of, of a calming motion of just rubbing on something like that, it relaxes me. It takes my mind off of whatever the stressor is. And then sometimes it, then I'll go into talking or crabbing or or being grateful, but you might, can't break a rock. So when you're really angry, exactly. yeah, a rock is good. <laughs> a rock is good. And I have ones that are little enough that I can slide them in my pocket. And the reason I do that is because sometimes I just put my hands in my pocket and I feel what's in there. It's a reminder that, oh, that's my connection to God. Oh, wait, I'm not alone. Oh, wait, I can pause for a second and give thanks. And it's this little moment of, that'll break the monotony or the craziness of the day and allows me to just connect. Now, we have um, some faith traditions use rosaries. The reason they use these, this is, it's because it's an object and it allows you to and keep your place and there's very, it's very methodical. Um, I have rosaries, I'm not Catholic, I have tons of rosaries because I love to feel them. I love the sound of them crunching in my hand as I walk in a, around and I pray. I love to have something. I, um, I probably should have had a fidget box as a kid, right? Because I like different textures. All of that matters. I've had one um, little heart locket. I forgot to bring it in here with me. I've had it since I was 18 and it was given to me by a homeless man. Um, after a summer of me hanging out with him and then I was heading back to college and he gave me a gumball machine locket. And I've held on to that for the last 30 years. And every time I see it, it reminds me of the blessings that I have. So just these little objects that was probably a, a, you know, a dime or a quarter locket that has stuck with me forever because it's a reminder. It connects me to the divine. It allows me to pause and see my blessing even in the middle of all of the other junk that's going on in our lives. So <clears throat> many people use um, candles as an object prayer. And when you have a candle, I don't know about you, flames or like bonfires, those just, they fascinate me. I love looking at fire. So that might be something that um, you might, you know, light a, light a flame, light a candle sit with it for a few moments, smell the smell, feel the flicker, hear the flicker. So these are ways that, um, that's another one. So there's countless others. We're gonna move into the next one so that we make sure that we, um, we get to them all. The next one is breath prayer. So Danielle's gonna talk a little bit about this because she does breath work. Breath prayer is one that I've, I've used more as of late. And I will tell you, there's something, um, something really cleansing about it. So do you want to tell? So your breath is really important for how you feel um, calmness in your body. And your breath will often mirror what you're feeling in your body. So if your breath is really quick and shallow, usually that's because you're stressed. And so if you can calm your breath down, you will naturally calm your body down. It will then keep snowballing, oh, it goes into the, the good part of things of it, um, reduces your cortisol and your adrenaline levels in your body, it reduces your blood pressure. Um, it does everything to kind of take you down from the moment. So just breathing alone is beautiful, but then when you mix it in with some of your thoughts that you're having, that adds a whole new wonderful level to it. And so it's the idea of whether you breathe in through your mouth and you take in that breath. A lot of people, when they take in their deep breaths, they raise their shoulders like, oh, I'm breathing in deep, but this isn't the deep breath. It's more about filling your belly out. And so you should actually feel your stomach get bigger. And then there's another layer of it that comes into your lungs. And then there's the exhale. And then if you add into this, this visual of your breathing in just the beauty of everything around you and all the goodness. And for me, I like to think of it as this golden sparkling light that I'm breathing in. And then in my mind's eye, I just watch it go through my body. And because it's this golden light, it's warming to me. I see it lighting up all the little dark places in my body and finding all these nitpicky things or these stressful things that are bothering me. And then when I breathe out and I let that exhale out, I'm releasing all those burdens and letting all of that go. 
So I find that to be really relaxing. And then I also, one of the things I have, let me see if I can show this at, um, this is called a love tuner. And it's this necklace I wear that helps with your breath work. So this is like in an instant moment of stress relief. It has this little piece here. And this is tuned to 528 Hertz, which is scientifically shown to be the frequency of love. Love is when you feel it and you're in love coherence with someone, it's 528 Hertz. And it just reminds you to take a moment and breathe. And so you just place it in your mouth. And so you add music to your exhale and then you breathe in again and then And the idea is you do it for, you know, if you can, 10 minutes, if not, just even once or twice, just to kind of help calm you. Um, but I find that hearing that sound is a really wonderful thing. So if this is something that you find helpful, um, I got this online through um, Deepak Chopra. It's um, called Love Tuner, and I think it's lovetuner.com. So there's just little things that help with your breath. And actually sitting next to her when she does that, it's a very calming, <laughs> very calming sound. So we're going to just do a moment of breath work together. Um, if you take, if you want more energy, it would be you taking uh, shallow breaths through your mouth. So shallow breaths. If you are stressed and you need to like get a grip, it would be long, slow breaths through your nose. Okay, so um, it's after lunch. So let's start with a couple of energy ones, right? So just get yourself in a posture where you're comfortable. And then you're just going to take a bunch of slow breaths. Let's just go with five through your mouth. Let them out. One more time. Just let that cleansing go. We, I used to care for my husband's grandfather who was 95. And every time we would go to the, the doctors, he would take these giant breaths and he'd say, honey, this is the way the ticket to old life, just breathe deep. And he would do it so big. Sometimes he'd knock over like the machine that was standing there because he would put his arms out. And I always think when I get too stressed, I need to practice breathing. Like it's a reminder, granddad did this and I need to do it. So I want you now, if you think about your stressful life, Get yourself in your posture. And now we're going to take a slow breath in through your nose and then you release it through your mouth. Ready? Remember to fill up your belly, not your shoulders. So every time I did that, I envisioned a hug from God. Because remember, as you're breathing in, you're taking in the divine. So when you're frazzled and, and you are you know, feeling it, you're at the end of your rope and you just pause and you breathe, Visually, visualization becomes a really important piece of this. So Danielle mentioned about visualizing the um, bits of, of sparkles and golden light golden light <laughs> i have a i have a vision of sparkles all around her when she does that you can choose what you want i like to envision um, rays of sunshine literally beaming through my body and if there's an area of my body that's hurting i imagine like really a concentrated yellow bright light on that particular body part and i do my breath work and i imagine that divine light flowing through me Okay, if we go on to nature praying, I didn't call this a nature prayer because I think it's an active one as opposed to one thing that you're doing. It's um, action. We are beings that need to be grounded. And so it's important that we take off our shoes and we step outside onto the earth at, at some point, right? Danielle taught me this years ago and now it's one of my favorite things to do is actually feel this the grass between my toes um, and to get outside. My my belief is when we connect with nature, we are literally holding hands with the divine because when we're out in creation, we're experiencing, we're experiencing God. 
We're experiencing the gospel instead of living it. We talk about in church, you hear about the gospel. When you're out in nature, you actually live the gospel. So um, I think you need to get out in nature as much as possible. One of the things that we, um, we do frequently is we have a prayer labyrinth that we go to up in Brighton. And we walk this nature it's a natural one. The, the woman who runs the, um, the place has mowed it into her grass. And so we walk around and, and she's planted butterfly bushes around it. And these butterflies kind of come in, in the right season and get in your face. And we allow ourselves to just let go as we walk in. And prayer labyrinths work in lots of different ways where you can, um, you go in talking about, talking to God about all of the things that you need help with, all of your requests. And when you get to the center, the idea is you lay those down and you breathe them out. And when you walk out, you're to walk out knowing that you've given everything to your creator and that you walk out with a lighter load. That's one way. There's several way, different ways you can go about um, doing the prayer labyrinth, but going out in nature and actively praying, you can do it while um, we have people we know do prayer walks they gather with somebody else and they go for a hike and they just pray the whole time. There are tons of trails and, and places in our area that you could go to to escape, even if it's just for a brief period of time that you can connect with God in nature. Do you wanna to add to that? Well, it's just, it's really important to um, literally hug a tree. <laughs> like, mm. My kids laugh at me at how many pictures they've taken of me hugging trees or, um, we were recently out in Sedona and just going up to the big rocks and I put my hands up there because I'm very much a person of energy and frequency. Um, the earth vibrates, it has a frequency. And when you connect with that, it really, it changes you. Your body will, when it's stressed, when it's under a lot of concern and pressure, your frequency drops and it gets very low but the earth has its normal natural frequency and your body will want to resonate and balance out. It's like a big tuning fork basically that your body will want to go to the higher frequency, the healthier frequency. So that's why you ground, that's why you go barefoot, that's why you hug a tree. The trees are connected through their roots and they're interconnected. They talk to each other and then they talk to the earth and then that shares that energy with you. Um, and like when I go through the prayer labyrinth, um, I started chanting. I found that to be really helpful. It's just saying the same thing over and over. So I don't have to think so much. Um, I also do frame drumming and I've brought my drum out and I've drummed my way through the labyrinth and back out. Um, I've just sung, I've screamed around <laughs> in nature, um, you know, scare the birds, make them all fly away. Um, but my ultimate favorite, favorite sound, if there's anything that makes me the happiest, is the crunching of leaves. This is my ultimate favorite time of the year because I can just be walking through and just hear crunch, 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 and I'm in a very happy place. And I guarantee you, if you do it, you will come out of whatever part of nature you went to a little bit calmer, at least. And a little bit is better than nothing. That's true. And in our area, we have a lot of water. So um, even sitting and looking at water, there's something serene about that. And there's something that will allow you to connect. Again, you don't hear me saying that you're praying lots of words, that you're doing this. Prayer is active. It doesn't have to just be something you're saying. And it doesn't have to just be a conversation. Prayer is connecting with God any way that you feel you can connect with your creator. So um, Danielle talks about the, the drums. I think one of the coolest things that I've ever seen done with these drums, we had a confirmation class and these students took drums and yelled into it to find their voice. And when you, when you hear yourself actually like releasing that kind of energy, you can't help but to come away differently. You come away feeling um, like something was lifted off of, your, off of your chest. So if any of you have even like a little drum that you could just yell, a tambourine for crying out loud, yell into it, see what happens. It's actually really kind of cool. Uh, we'll move into the devotional prayer. The devotional prayer, there's so many oodles and oodles of choices. You know, Some of you might've seen the Sarah Young book. She has the Jesus Calling one. Joyce Meyer is another popular one. There are uh, Margaret Feinberg. She's one of my favorite authors. There are so many different types of devotionals. And what I like about these 
is that they're super duper short. So I don't care how busy you are, you can read three sentences to start your day or middle of your day or before you go to bed. And our phones now are wonderful because we have the option of pulling up something called the Bible app. And the Bible app, it's a version Bible app if you're from the Christian tradition. And it has all sorts of plans that you can follow and it, it takes you through everything every day. It reminds you of something. So some days when my life is nutty, even as a pastor, the best I can do as far as reading my Bible is reading the one verse that is sent to me from my Bible app. And I used to feel really guilty about that until I thought, well, you know what? That is one more verse than somebody else read today. And I think about it as I drive down the street. I think about it as I run into work. I think about it as I'm helping somebody. And I let, I dwell on it. And I'm going to share with you a method of, um, of uh, spiritual practice. And it's a devotional practice. It's called dwelling in the word. So it's one of my favorites. How much time do we have? Um, I think about 15 minutes. Okay. It's one of my favorites. I'm just going to share, we're going to do about five minute lesson on this because I want you to um, be able to do this on your own. Dwelling in the word is a way for us to hear a passage, whether it be a poem or a scripture or um, a sayings, a meme, and you just think about it, right? So for me, what we're going to do right now, we're going to read out of the Christian Bible. We're going to read um, out of the book of Romans. And I want you to listen to what I read and you're going to think of what one sentence jumped out at you. This isn't an idea that you're going to like, um, you're going to interpret the whole Bible. You're going to find the meaning for the whole passage. Mm -mm. What jumps out at you? So we know that scripture is living word, which means it changes and it evolves and it's always breathing new life. And so what I read to you today Maybe tomorrow you would hear something totally different and that's okay. That's why it's a living word. So what you would do, I would read it out loud and then typically um, you would read it to yourself and then we would read it again and then you would talk about it with somebody. And the idea would be that whatever you talk about, like if Danielle and I are talking, Danielle would tell you what I said. I would tell you what Danielle said because it allows you to practice um, active listening. And when you're actively listening, you're more present in the moment. And when your life is overwhelming, it's really hard to be present. Now that might not be an option for you to do this with another person, but you can still dwell in the word. So the way I practice it on my own, typically when I drive into work, I will either take the verse from my, uh, the U version Bible app, or I'm preach a lot. So I have a lot of Bible verses that I have to think about. And I will just let it kind of hover and wonder why did that one pop up? And I just let it like, I chew on it. In doing so, I'm engaging with God. I'm, I'm actively engaging. And often answers to my prayers or my wish list or however else I pray come up in that, in that dwelling. So I'm going to read to you from the fifth chapter of Romans. I'm going to read to you uh, verses three to five. So your goal is to, to come up with one thing that jumps out at you. Okay, let's try it. And not only that, but we boast in our suffering, knowing that suffering produces endurance and endurance produces character and character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. I'm going to read it one more time, and then we're going to sit for a minute with it. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, endurance produces character, character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us.
So maybe there was a line or a word that jumped out at you. And normally we would have a discussion and we would kind of say what that word was. But on your own, you can kind of take that word and say, why did that word surface? Why is that the one I'm hanging on to right now? And as you dwell in that and you think about it, this is where you and the creator have a conversation. This is a form of prayer. So in case you are wanting to go further with that, that was Romans 5, 3 to 5. So as we move into the next category, which is creative prayer, there are all these beautiful prayer journals that they sell now everywhere. Coloring books for adults. Um, they even have Bibles now that you can color on the side. But creative prayer can look lots of different ways. It could be you writing a poem. It could be you singing a song. It could be you taking a piece of paper and just scribbling on it because that's how the level of frustration you feel today. And all of that is a way of creating. When you create, you are actually being the divine because the divine is the creator. So anytime you create anything, be it art, be it music, be it a nice meal, be it a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, you are literally being a part of the creative process, which allows you to be living prayer. So, you know, we have, um, I brought just journal books to show you. They don't have to be anything fancy. It could be kind of not fancy. And I've watched people take a 30 second doodle. And I was part of an art, art prayer one time and people just started writing whatever came to their mind. And then afterwards they looked at it and then they could see the connections. Like, oh my gosh, I didn't even know that was bothering me. Holy cow, where did that crazy line come from? And as you would analyze what your artwork looked like or your doodle or your scribble, you would see how much you released out of you. Whether you, right now, maybe you don't feel very creative because you're, you're caught in a different part of your life, but each one of us have a creative side. And so when we tap into one of our seven different intelligences, you might find that your creative side is gardening, or maybe your creative side is running a race, or maybe your creative side is screaming a song. Whatever your creative side is, there's all different modalities that, to express it. I encourage you to try it and to put down your thoughts either onto paper or canvas or onto the pavement as you run. And while you're doing it, have a conversation with God. Let all of those thoughts that you have in your head, and it's okay to say like, this stinks. It's okay to do that, but it's also wonderful where you have panic that you replace it with praise, where you have worry that you add some worship. So every time you counteract one, the negative with the positive. So in my creative prayer, I always follow prayer path. And here's what the path stands for. The P is I start with praising God. The A, I apologize for being a schmuck somewhere along the day, because I'm sure I have been. The T is I always give thanks. And then the last thing I do is ask for help with the H. But I remember that I first want to come to God in any of these ways. And I want to praise God because God is present. God is not the get sufferer, the, the one who gives us suffering. The God is the one who accompanies us in our suffering. And in our prayer for us to, to approach it that way, when we start with praise, you'll see our help tends to get a little bit smaller when we start to praise God for all the blessings we do have, which sometimes are hard to find in the middle of crises. I'll move into rote prayer. Rote prayer is to me one of the, um, the oldest type of prayer and I disconnect with that. However, there are lots of people who find this to be the one that is um, like coming home, saying the Lord's prayer, um, taking a Bible verse and reading it, um, saying the Apostles' Creed, going, if you're from the Buddhist tradition or one of the a Native American tradition or one of these other traditions, having some of the chants that you might do, that is the rote prayer. It's the one that you commit to memory and you just say it over and over. For some people, that is comfort. And for some people, that's all you got. And that is awesome. And if that's what works for you, then by all means, 
lean into that. That is important to do what works for you. So we're gonna move into our next little poem, poem prayer. May I be at peace. May my heart remain open. May I awaken to the light of my own true nature. May I be healed. May I be a source of healing for all beings. As you are caregivers in very difficult situations, I think it's really important that you remember that you are loved <clears throat> and that when you are able to give yourself self-love, you're able to give love to others on a whole different level. So the one thing Danielle and I do, um, we, we work together to bring spiritual healing to people because we are firm believers that in order to receive God's love, you have to love yourself. But once you do, the natural response is to give that love without condition, fully being able to do so. So we are going to add all of you to our prayers so that we can encourage you to learn to love yourself a little bit more. This is my contact information. Tomorrow at the stress management one, you'll see Danielle's contact information. And we extend this invitation to you that if you um, would like us to work with you in any way, if you would like personal prayer, if you would like us to come and um, do what we do best, we call it wonder twinning, which <laughs> sounds crazy, but it's us doing spiritual care and um, energy healing to people. You can contact me, you can contact Danielle, but know that we are a resource for you. And we're grateful that we are able to spend some time with you, maybe helping you find new ways to connect with God, our creator. So now, if there are any questions, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. Oh, we got a little chat. Hugging trees is the best. <laughs> I'm glad I have a tree hugging partner. Yay. <laughs> Hug a giant rock, boy. That's just fun. We should have had some of those pictures. I would have really thought we were nuts. Uh -huh. <laughs> you can actually, when you take a break today, go out and, and hug a tree. I promise you, or go get, it's a beautiful day to go be barefoot and go feel the earth a little bit, but it's pretty cool. I have to say my husband will hug one and he'll be like, I don't get it. I, I don't get, I don't feel it, but that's okay. <laughs> but when you really concentrate, you feel the energy, then you realize how connected we all are. If we, there's energies even in the tree, gosh, mm -hmm. we all have a shared energy that we could lift each other up. It's a beautiful thing. Any other questions from anyone or thoughts you want to share? The tree hugger was me. All right. <laughs> you see the fellow tree hugger. <laughs> There's actually your, your, your hammock chair too. I see that. I, I, yes, I, we have four of these in the house, and swinging prayer. I'm all like, for yeah, prayer. all any kind of movement that settles the nervous system and helps like bring you. I, it, this was fabulous. Thank you so much. Like all the different forms of prayer. I I know most of them, but it was nice to have them consolidated into uh, into an overview and and good reminders about how to do each one. I'm like, oh. I, re I remember doing drumming stuff when I lived in California with these crazy nuns. I'm like, I should bring the drumming back. <laughs> bring the drumming back. Sure. Find my rosary. Like, <laughs> so yeah, we have um, five total hammocks in our house. Four in the house. Four in the house. One outside. So yeah, they're great. But thank yep. you very much. This was fabulous. Great. Thank you. Anyone else have any comments? Or maybe a, a style we didn't think of or we didn't share, something that you do that you can share. Let's see. Huh. As I'm looking, there's a giant Miss Pac-Man machine on the other side of my computer. <laughs> That's totally a form of prayer for me. <laughs> Well, thank you guys so much. If nobody has questions, um, feel I free. Was just gonna, oh, please, yeah, please, please. Yeah, I was just going to say thank you so much um, for just highlighting the importance of this. And I think there is so much power in coming together 
especially as parents who are walking this road, because um, I don't know about the other parents represented, but um, I have other communities like within our church um, or within my neighborhood, um, but no one is living the life of a parent dealing with these chronic challenges and then what I always call the shrapnel, like the, you know, the other ways that affects your family. Um, and so I think just even, even though we were listening and receiving from you, but there was an exchange going on, I think just knowing that other parents reviewing this and, and gleaning from this. And so I personally, as, um, I know this is a first ever care conference, but I really think that this would be something, a real priority to create spaces for parents dealing with kind of unthinkable challenges to come together and lift each other up and just be in that space of understanding as um, people of faith. Because I think it's really hard um, to feel that, that, that way in, um, in other communities. And, you know, we too relate to that. So like I have a son who's got um, multi-cystic kidney dysplasia. He's got hearing loss, vision issues. He's autistic, ADHD, mm -hmm. OCD. So um, I relate to a lot yeah. of the issues that are going on. So these are all things I use for myself. These are why I've learned to teach them because they save me often. Yes. So awesome. Thank you yeah. so much. Well, thank you all. Thanks Appreciate everybody. It. God bless thank you so much. That was yes. wonderful. Thank you. Thank Bye. you. Bye-bye.